Hello wonderful person and welcome to the center of our own galaxy, Sagittarius A star. In today's video we're going to be talking about a new discovery of something else very mysterious and very strange happening here in the center and the discovery of what seems to be one of the largest structures in the galaxy. Let's talk about this and welcome to What The Man. So when it comes to talking about structures in the galaxy, I think for the most part, uh, most people believe that the galaxy sort of looks like this. And this would have been true possibly, I guess, a decade or so ago, maybe a little bit longer. But since then we started to discovering a lot of new things and a lot of new formations that make this image too simple and very incomplete um, to what the galaxy really looks like. A few years ago I tried to create the uh, more realistic representation, but even that was incomplete back then and is definitely incomplete now, because we know that there are a lot of other structures here uh, that are just a little bit more difficult to see. Like for example, our galaxy has the so-called galactic streams that we've been discovering pretty much every year now. There are uh, quite a lot of them that have already been discovered and these represent the leftovers from various smaller galaxies that the Milky Way has absorbed but left pieces of those galaxies sort of orbiting around. We also have the recently discovered Fermi bubbles that we found back in 2010 and we still have no idea what they are but these are extremely large structures um, sort of looking like bubbles, I guess, on both sides of the Milky Way. There's a lot of very powerful radiation emanating from there, including gamma rays. And in one of the previous videos, um, I even suggested that there might be a chance that what we're looking at is interaction of dark matter. But we know so little about these bubbles and we understand them so little that it will probably take us a few years before we finally know what's really happening here. And just now, very recently, another scientific team discovered something else unusual close to the center of the galaxy. The unusual radio bubbles that you're looking at right here. Now it's kind of difficult to actually understand what's happening, but the middle of the galaxy is right there. And there are these very large formations around it that sort of resemble bubbles. This is something that the scientist, the primary scientist behind this paper that you can find in the description below has been studying since the 80s, basically for like what, 30 years now, 40 years. And back then he only discovered some parts of it. He discovered these unusual formations that he referred to as filaments that were magnetized. They um, had very large length, uh, several light years across, and they seem to have unusual structure, origin, and um, well, magnetism. He couldn't really explain them back then and actually even today we still don't really know what they are. But what he realized over the years is that a lot of these filaments were actually inside of these larger structures. And these structures seem to contain several hundred of them, all in a sense kind of connected together with this unusual and very, I guess in some sense beautiful radio structure that um, we don't have a name for yet, but right now we're calling them radio bubbles. Mostly because it's only really visible in radio waves and they do resemble bubbles in some way. Here's what the map of all of this kind of looks like. Um, you can see the black hole is right here. This is Sagittarius A star. And uh, the bubbles, I mean, they're not really bubble looking, but they do look like some sort of leftovers from something really major. And all this probably connects to Sagittarius A star as well. And by the way, the distance here is roughly around 13 to maybe 1400 light years. Now, that's a pretty large distance. Uh, just to give you a comparison, the distance from planet Earth, which is somewhere right here in this arm, to the center of the galaxy is about 25,000 light years. And so that would be maybe 1 15th of the distance. So these bubbles are not really that big when it comes to the galactic size but they are big enough when it comes to uh, more human size, or even when it comes to just looking at various stars. In other words, if I were to try to help you visualize this here in Space Engine, I would have to fly uh, at the speed of light for roughly around 1400 years, and I'm going to try to show you what all of this looks like in the simulation. So here we're only about 10 light years away. We have to go 
for a very long time away from the center before we can reach the limit of the size of these bubbles. And I think we're about one fifth of the way there. And roughly around here, I think. Yeah, this is about 1200, 1300, 1400. So this is the distance to those unusual bubbles um, from the center of the galaxy. As you can imagine, these objects are really large, which is why we're technically considering them to be one of the largest objects in the galaxy. Simply because they do seem to be connected to each other and they do seem to have an interaction of some sorts. But we obviously don't really know what they are. The one explanation and suggestion so far is of course related to the black hole and in some sense, well, let me explain it to you this way. Here's a geyser and after a geyser erupts, it sort of leaves these um, heated up water droplets that do produce mist that stays in the vicinity for quite a long time. And normally there's quite a lot of energy uh, released in a geyser eruption and this kind of maybe parallels what happened back then millions of years ago in the center of our galaxy. In other words, it's quite possible that the supermassive black hole um, increased its luminosity and its eruptions and the size of the astrophysical jets increased to the point where it was very likely emitting a lot of energy. It might have even become a temporary quasar in a sense. Now, not an actual quasar that uh, is so powerful that you can see it from really far away, but a black hole that you could sort of consider an AGN, an active galactic nuclear galaxy. In other words, these astrophysical jets increased in power so much that the emissions uh, generated a lot of energy and spread out a lot of material for many, many light years uh, close to the black hole. And it's very possible that, similarly to a geyser, this is how these radio bubbles were formed as well. So basically what we're looking at is kind of a signal or an indication, or really just the leftovers from a very large emission coming from both sides of the black hole, which is of course how we theoretically predict um, these jets to behave anyway. And these emissions left all of this material behind that is still very energized, very polarized, um, extremely magnetic and emits quite a lot of radio waves even today. And when this happened is of course another question and maybe by studying these bubbles we'll figure it out one day. But for now the assumption is that it might have happened a few million years ago and it very likely made the black hole extremely overbearingly bright. So bright as a matter of fact that it was probably a typical star in the night skies, maybe even brighter. And we don't really know if this radiation in any way affected the life on Earth, but if the jets were pointing at our planet, which is actually very unlikely, but if they were, in that case, it might have actually caused another extinction. But we know that a few million years ago, there was no major extinction event, so it's very unlikely that any of this affected the life on Earth. Nevertheless, though, these events are very powerful and they can totally affect life on Earth, which is why it's important for us to study what happens when our black hole suddenly becomes really bright. Now, um, we don't know why it happened. It's very likely that possibly some sort of a planet or a star got swallowed by the black hole and gave it enough fuel to create these emissions. But all of this is, of course, a speculation right now, because the only thing we know for a fact is that there are these uh, radio waves that we've detected. They seem to be leftovers from something really major that occurred millions of years ago, but their origin could still really be from anything. For all we know, maybe this is a sign of a completely different phenomenon we just don't understand yet. And we've just discovered this and confirmed this only a few days ago from when I'm making this video, so it will probably take a few years before we can pinpoint the true origin of these objects and possibly even longer. And one of the reasons why we haven't really seen it until now is actually because if you were to look at this region, um, most of it is dominated by Sagittarius A itself, by the black hole. It's such a bright object and it's so extremely powerful that it sort of hides a lot of other things nearby. So it's a little bit difficult to see things here, even with a powerful enough telescope. And what's really unusual is that, by um, other standards, our black hole is considered to be really quiet. This is actually what a quiet region looks like. So you can imagine what a non-quiet or active galactic nuclei would look like. It would be so strong in all sorts of transmissions that, um, like I said before, it might actually affect life in very bad ways. 
But there are also a few things we've learned by looking at these radio bubbles. For one, we've learned um, approximately how much energy was released during this event, and it's equivalent to about 70 foes. Fo is actually a, a measurement unit used for supernova. Normally, one supernova releases around one fo, which is equivalent to 10 to the power of 51 ergs. So this event released something equivalent to about 70 supernova. And just to give you another comparison, our sun over its whole lifetime is going to release about 1 uh, 50th of that energy. And so essentially it's equivalent to our sun shining for 10 billion years and then doing so about 60 times. This is how much energy this event released. And the other discovery is of course related to the filaments themselves, um, which suggests that all of these radio filaments, magnetic filaments, and all of these other unusual um, energized events happening in this region are all connected. There is definitely a connection between them and it's quite observable. And um, doesn't just suggest that they all came from the same event, it also suggests that they keep continuously interacting with each other for millions of years to come, producing quite a lot of energy even afterwards. And although on the one hand it would be nice for scientific reasons to actually witness such event and possibly study it in a little bit more detail, on the other hand, a lot of scientists also believe that we might not really survive such an event. It's very likely that the amount of energy such event produces might potentially create a lot of problems here on Earth, decreasing the um, amount of ozone layer in our atmosphere and essentially turning our planet a little bit more dangerous to live on. Okay, maybe not this dangerous, not boiling Earth dangerous, but still dangerous enough for life to change its direction in some way or another. In other words, these powerful events coming from supermassive black holes in the middle might actually cause extinction events that could definitely change the history of the planet. But anyway, that's of course a speculation, this is not something we know for a fact, we just know that it's possible. But until we learn more about these radio bubbles and until we understand what's really happening there and how they might affect things on the planet, we're just going to leave it at that. Check out the study in the description below, come back tomorrow to learn something you may have not known before, and subscribe if you still haven't. Also maybe share this video with someone who enjoys learning about space and sciences, and maybe even consider supporting this channel on Patreon because it does help me quite a lot. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye bye.